What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Now today we are at Trio Mountain for what was the final race of the third test season here. So third race, round number three, final one. And uh, it was a very interesting season. So we had ourselves a mess of a race for the first one around Brands Hatch. And then I guess the second one around Spa in the Group 3 cars was one of the most absolute perfect combinations of uh, Manufacturing Cup racing. As everyone said, it was one of the best races that they had produced here on Grand Turismo 7. But this third one here was around Trial Mountain in the Group 4 cars. And as you can see, we elected to go with the Subaru, the dominant OP manufacturer. And you can see we weren't the only ones that decided to pick it here for this race, well, for these, this season. And uh, you're going to see why exactly how this Subaru is just ridiculously quick and why it is the OP manufacturer for this season. So after five laps here for quality we were only best enough to get fourth place 158.0 was our fastest lap time but i was feeling very confident to get a good one on this lap but unfortunately we just couldn't really improve and we were able to only get ourselves into fifth place starting position so nothing to worry about we still had uh, you know plenty of laps to try to work our way up to first and try to get ourselves a win here but what's going to be a little bit extra work that we had to do especially starting behind four very very quick drivers and a couple more right behind us but let's get into the intro the brand new intro for the manufacturers cup race i honestly really really dig it i think it looks absolutely beautiful um we're gonna see how we do around here as the strategy that we we're going to implement for this race was to come into the pit since it was a mandatory pit stop uh switch off tires and keep the fuel that we had so we're not going to put any fuel in and see how that works around here as it's going to be 12 laps around trial mountain so three two one and away we go starting once again in fifth place right behind burst gt we head into turn number one of Trial Mountain. Make sure that we don't miss our apex here as we had cold tires. But again, starting off on the mediums, we were also given the hard compound tires, but the mediums were the required. So uh, we decided why use a harder compound tire since so we have to come into the pits anyway. So we decided to stay on the mediums for the start. And uh, when we come into the pits, we're gonna switch ourselves out to a second set and uh, see if we can attack whoever's in front of us. Let's see where we finish off at but anyways finishing the first sector we gain a ton of time on burst as burst looks like he is all over the racetrack as he's just weaving in and out of some of these corners and due to all that weaving we were able to catch up to him get into the slip as we come down the very very long straight leading us into this i guess you could say a hairpin but it's a very very long hairpin but into the left hander we lit ourselves back into the mountain into this windy section of the racetrack very very fun if you get it correctly especially this corner right here if you break right where you need to hit the apex and get a really great run on the exit it just is so satisfying to do and if we are able to get it right you can definitely make up a lot of time since it sets you up for a great exit here as we honestly didn't really get the best of corners and due to that, we lost a lot of time to the guys up ahead. But jumping our way up into lap number three, we're able to keep up with Burst. But you can see that the leader was able to pull away, gaining about a good half a second gap away from us. But he wasn't too far up the road. So we're still keeping up with pace. And we're still keeping with Burst. But behind us, we were starting to pull away just a tad bit away from Time Killer, which is great because we don't have to worry about him much. And in the meantime, we're just trying to put in quick lap times make sure that we don't overdrive the car since we did want to save the tires as much as we can uh due to the tires actually getting worn out really very fairly quick on this race so we just want to do everything we can to stay smooth with these tires so that we can maintain our pace throughout the stint but as we come out of the left hander past the back straight See, we're still gaining on burst here as he's looking like he's really, really struggling now. I'm not sure if he overcooked the tires, but as we come into the right-hander onto the final sector, you can see that Ruben up in first had a simple mistake, lost about half a second, and that allowed the two drivers right behind him to kind of catch up to him. So it's now a three-car train, and he got burst and us right behind as we head into the chicane. 
Spotting up breaking point into the chicane. Second and third are fighting with each other just a bit, but Burst gets a really, really bad entrance into the corner. Compromises his exit. He goes almost into the wall, has to get into the brakes. Just barely grazes it, slows himself down, and gets a really bad exit leading down to the straight. Going into lap number four, we get a really great run on Burst now just due to the fact that he lost a lot of time. But as we try to help him out here and give him a little bump so we can catch up, Decides to defend the inside, goes into the first corner very, very narrowly. And due to that, he's going to get himself here a half a second penalty. And that is music to my eyes, even though that didn't make any sense. Uh, music to my ears? I don't know, I lost my point. But anyways, it's a, good, it's a good thing to see right ahead of us that he's got a half a second penalty. Because once we get to the penalty zone, as long as we can keep up some pace with these guys... We should be able to get around him and then try to work our way up to catch up to the podium. But as we come out of the right hand here, Burst gets a really bad exit. We make contact with him. Now it's side by side into the left hander. Our plan goes straight out the window as we get a really great run on the outside. Make a little bit of contact. And we are now up into P4. But unfortunately, due to all that battling, we lost about an entire second to the top three. And that is not what we needed as we get now a little peek from Time Killer. Tries to go into the inside, hoping he doesn't kill us going into this corner. And uh, we give him plenty of room here going into the left-hander. Side by side into the corner. We get a better sense of momentum here as we get a really great run on the exit. We're going to have the corner going into the right-hander. And we're able to cover ourselves here, find ourselves up into P4. And not only that, we're actually able to gain just a tad bit of time on the leader as we were able to close the gap by about two tenths just off of that two corners. And now coming out of the this uh, final left-hander, leading ourselves into the chicane. Ruben up ahead, the leader, is ghosted out. And not sure exactly what happened to him, but we were able to get around him. And now we find ourselves in the podium, 3.6 seconds behind the leader, the new leader of DP, uh, DRP ADI. And now we just try to escape everybody from behind as Ruben gets overtaken by uh, Time Killer. And that was the least of his worst. He gets overtaken by Sonic and not sure where Burst went. But Burst was right ahead of us. But now he is nowhere near in the top eight. And we just set our sights now on the leaders as we come into lap number six. So on to lap number six here on the final sector. You can see that we just gained a ton of time as these two, I think, were fighting with each other the entirety of that lap. And I'm not going to complain about that. Let them battle all race if they need to. As long as we stay out of that fight, we should be able to hopefully get around them as they both come into the pits. One at 45%, the other one at 51%. As well as a couple of guys right behind us come into the pits as well. But we decide to stay out. We elect to just go another lap. Try to see if we can put in as fast of a lap time as we can uh, for our in-lap. And then we're going to come in, try to avoid all the fighting. And see where we come out at here as we come out into the final part of the first sector. So into the mountain bit we cross the line and that is exactly what we want to see here purple sector sector jesus i cannot speak because i'm so excited but we get a purple sector uh for the first sector and we feel very very confident now with the lap so i just continue on here just didn't want to overdrive the car i know that we had a really great first sector i think the second sector was pretty decent and as we come out of the final couple of corners here, we head straight into the pits. And uh, we're going to switch off to a new set of mediums, but not refuel. As I felt like I could easily save a bit of fuel to make it to the end. I mean, we only need to save about 0.2 of a lap. And as we come out of the pits, you can see that the leader is up ahead of Hefty. And almost, almost we make contact with Ruben as Ruben just comes out of nowhere. And luckily we didn't go all the way to the right hand side because uh, that would have been on my fault. I didn't have the radar on. We kept it on the fuel mapping and unfortunately due to that, that could have been a very, very big catastrophic uh, accident. Because we would have ran into the side of Ruben and who knows what would have happened. We probably could have gotten a penalty. We probably would have killed him. I mean, just, just multiple things. But luckily the things played out the way they did and we are now stuck right behind Ruben here in fourth place. But I was a bit suspicious about where Hefty came from. As Hefty was not the leader going into the pits, I don't believe. And I was suspecting that he had to come into the pits uh, before the end of this race. So, if everything played out the way that it was supposed to, then we are currently 
what I believe is in P3, DRP is going to be the leader once Hefty comes in. And right now, me and Ruben are fighting here for second place. But while me and Ruben were fighting with each other here, we were also catching up to DRP as it looked like he elected to not go for any tires. And that actually hurt him a bit as I think he was using the, the Nissan GTR, but that was not a great car on tires. It was a great car on fuel, but with the tires, uh, he just could not save it like he can with his WRX. And you could just see right here how much quicker the WRX is if we are just gaining so much time on him. And due to the, him not switching off the tires, it's not helping at all. And uh, us and Ruben are just going to be sneaking our way every single corner. Just creeping in about a couple tenths on the Nissan up ahead. And not only that, you saw it going into the final chicane. He does have a penalty. Serves his penalty right down the front straight. And it's going to be a bit interesting here as Ruben's catching up to DRP very, very quickly. We get into the slip. Goes into the inside. Side by side into turn number one. Someone's going to have to give. And there's a Ruben that gives up right here as DRP gets a great run on the X on the outside. But it's still not over here as Ruben still is going to try to go for an overtake once again. He knows that we have the pace right behind him. So if he can build a gap between us and DRP and just put in some good laps or some good corners, he could probably pull away here, stretch this gap from us. But as we come into the first sector, leading ourselves into the second sector, Ruben just keeps overdriving the car. DRP is still trying to go for an overtake. Good on DRP because he's keeping us alive in this race. And as we come into the final part of the uh, windy bits of the first sector, and a little bit of the second sector, we get a really great exit shift onto the left-hand side. And it's going to be a drag race against us and DRP, but DRP is going to have no chance as we get into the slip with Ruben and get a very, very great drive off the exit due to just the monstrosity performance that this WRX has. And heading in down to the final part of the straight, leading ourselves into a left-hander, into the final windy bits. We're able to get the overtake on DRP. And now it is a battle between us and Ruben once again, continuing on. As we go into the inside, try to take a little lunge, try to scare him a bit, but he didn't take the bait. Was able to maintain his cool. And he was able to maintain that second place as this is basically the battle for the lead because once hefty comes in ruben's gonna turn into first place and we're gonna turn into second but as we come into the chicane ruben goes in for a defensive line heading to the left right hander as we try to set ourselves up for a great exit he just gets a really really good corner and he's able to maintain his position and keep up the speed so now we have to just kind of wait here and hope that Hefty comes into the pits this lap. And once he does, this is going to be basically the battle for the lead here. As we come out of the final part of the straight. Leading ourselves back into the final sector. And as we come into the final sector, we were saving fuel. So these ever since we came out of the pits and we were stuck right behind Ruben and uh, DRP, we were saving fuel. So we were short shifting, letting go of the throttle early on some of the corners. And everything was looking according to plan. So we saved enough fuel so that we can go for an attack on the final lap. As everything goes perfectly. As Hefty goes into the pits. So if we're staying on the outside here. We're going to have to try to go for an overtake right now on Rubens. This is going to probably be our best chance. We try to set ourselves up exactly the same way we did on the last lap. And you can see right there. Ruben makes contact with the wall. Ruins his momentum. We're going to kind of sneak it into the inside. It was a little bit sketchy there as he was just covering the inside. And it's going to be side by side into turn number one. Someone's going to have to give. It's going to be us or Ruben. Ruben decides to back out a bit early. We break as late as we can. And we cover ourselves into turn number one and turn number two. Heading into the left-hander right here. Once again, Ruben tries to go for the inside but just cannot do it. And as we come into the tunnel sector right here, we keep an eye on the radar to see where he's at on the gap. And it's still not over here as Ruben goes in for a defensive, or not defensive, but a, a very, very narrow line on the exit. And as we come out of the right hander, we now get ourselves a little gap as we get into the purple sector. We're going to abuse these tires and abuse the field that we saved up here. Just go on a full out, all out attack. And hopefully we can hold off Ruben as we now come down the uh, straight for the final time here. Shifting onto the inside, trying to break the toe. It's still about three tenths between us and Ruben, so it's still not over here as he gets a really, really great run down the straight. And as we come into the left-hander, I can still see him on the radar, but just trying to focus on 
Making sure that we hit all of our marks here. Make no mistakes. As we're just focusing on hitting our marks. Keeping an eye on the breaking point. But also making sure that Ruben doesn't go in for an overtake. But as we come into the left hand, you can see that the gap just changes from about three tenths to one second. He got a really, really bad exit on one of the corners. Got a made, a made a huge mistake. And as we come into the final chicane, we're going to be very, very lucky here as the gap is just increasing more and more as Time Killer makes an overtake on Ruben. And coming out of the final corner, we're just going to take it nice and easy here. Shift very, very early. Keep an eye on the fuel. It's a very, very long run down to the line. And going down to the line, it's going to be a purple lap. So fastest lap and a win here around Trial Mountain in the Subaru WRX. And as you can see on the final leaderboard, the WRX basically took five, six positions out of the top eight. And you can just see how incredibly great this car just handled around this track and how great the Group 4 WRX was as we are able to get our very first win of the season. And what a way to get it on the final race. And that is a great way to finish this season here and lead ourselves into might be the fourth test season or the new the new manufacturer cup season so anyways really really great racing with ruben everybody in this lobby was very very clean so really really appreciated that hope you guys really enjoyed the racing and the video if you guys did feel free to smash that like button for the youtube algorithm hit that red subscribe button if you want to catch more content and if you guys really enjoyed it which i hope you guys did i hope to catch you guys on the next one Peace.